Well, this was quite special. We had one of these beauties soaring across the sky on Saturday the 3rd of March in 2012. And uh, it was one of this little guy's big brothers and it screamed across the sky. It was first spotted as a gigantic fireball in Stornoway and it was seen as far south as Essex. So we're, we're hoping that something fell out of it. As it was traveling across the sky, it was seen by hundreds and hundreds of people and revelers you know that were out of a Saturday night and it dropped something we're, we're fairly sure that some meteorites fell out of this fire because the it was such a, a wonderful sight there were sparks falling off it and each one of these little sparks would have been an individual meteorite so we could be looking at uh, pieces like this uh, or smaller then they're, they're not all necessarily this size sometimes they're bigger sometimes but more often than not they may be the size of a pea or a walnut or whatever sort of fruit you care to imagine. Um, but here we go. This is a meteorite that fell in Morocco about 10 years ago. And it's been saved from the environment. It's not been rained on. And that, that's key here. Because meteorites contain iron. Now one of the first things that you can do when hunting for a meteorite is any strange rock that you see check it with a magnet I've got a magnet here on the end of my hunting cane that I, I walk around and anything that sticks to a magnet I'll prize it off and take a closer look at it um, so look there you go it sticks quite happily this is a very powerful magnet here um, it's a rare earth magnet you need to use something a lot stronger than just a free fridge magnet a loudspeaker magnet might do the trick so there we go, a nice cling on there. Uh, the next thing to look for is, as you can see on this one, it's black. Well, that's called fusion crust. Now this is where it, it burned as it came through the atmosphere at 20 miles a second. That's 20 miles per second. So you can imagine the, the friction that's set up as this thing soars across the sky and it melts the stone and it pulls it back and it's dripping and there's sparks flying off and all of this chaos going on. But when it hits the ground, and as you can see, this one came in for a skid landing, like that, it cracked. So we can see there that this fusion crust here, it's only half a millimetre thick on there. The rest of the stone is untouched. And that's how a space rock looks like before it hits the atmosphere. Now, meteorites, they're, they're not radioactive. Forget everything that you've seen in the movie. It just doesn't happen that way. They're not too hot to pick up. In fact, when people tell me that they, they've seen a meteorite fall and it made a crater and they couldn't pick it up until the next morning, I know they're telling me pork. It's, it just doesn't happen like that. If anything, it's going to be too cold to pick up because meteorites, they're still internally at the temperature of space, which is only three degrees above absolute zero. That's as cold as it's possible. Yeah. So they may even grow a layer of frost. But so that that that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a black rock, not necessarily this size, but covered with fusion crust, light coloured inside, sticks healthily to a magnet. And that's a fresh meteorite. Now on the other hand, if a meteorite's been on the ground for uh, any length of time, we're going to see something like this. Because they contain iron, they rust, and that's not good news for a meteorite, as you can see this one here. Still got the fusion crust on it, but it's all gone manky and rusty and pretty horrible, really. But what we can do with this one, I know it's a meteorite, but anybody that's not sure, what you could do is take a file to it, a grinding wheel, and just nick off a little corner. Uh, you're not going to affect the the value of it because this is the only way of giving it any value at all to prove that it is a meteorite and not just some old earth rock. So nick a corner off, have a look inside. You don't have to be a scientist to, to do this. You don't have to have glasses, wild hair and a, a big long beard. Anybody can do this. 
Look inside and what you would expect to see there are little shiny flecks of metal, as if somebody had made up a big um, sort of pot of concrete and poured in some iron filings. Um, let it set, cut it open, had a look, and you can see those little iron filings glistening within the stone, within the mixture. And if you see that, that's the time you need to give me a call, have a look at my website, or, uh, www meteorites.uk.com give me a call send me some pictures in the first place um, I'd be very interested because these sort of things yes they're, they're interesting to science but my interest is as a collector and a dealer and I, I would distribute these to the scientists but I make a living that's how I make a living by buying selling wheeling and dealing in meteorites um, so let me know. There's a there's a healthy reward that will, for something this size, run quite happily into five figures.